So on section one one, we start on chapter four, or not chapter four, page four, which we're going to talk about identifying families of functions first of all. Okay, what it means to be a family and what it means to, or what the 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 basic ones look like. You're going to hear me refer to these ones as parents because they're the ones that after that then you transform them and make your children. Okay, so. There, therefore, you're going to hear me refer to them as parents. The first parent that we have in that family is a linear. Or no, sorry, 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 forgot one. Constant. A constant parent, and by the way, these are, this is my graph. Nice straight axes for you. By the way, if you're interested in having graph paper, I will have some. It's over by the copy machine, or at least I'll get some by tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Monday, um, in those black trays that are over by the bridges. Um, they'll have graph paper on top of there if you need it. Um, me, personally, I just always use uh, just a homemade graph like this. But one thing about my graphs, just so that you guys no, I will always, always, always label the x and y axis in these spots. And the reason for that is because you need to know where that is, especially when I draw this constant right now. Because if you don't have it listed, you're not going to know what it is. So the first one, or how it looks, is you'll see something like f of x and then equal some number. Okay, so Miss Miller, give me a number. Three. Three? Okay. So it says f of x equals three. That's what a constant is. Notice, there's no variable in the problem at all. f of x is just a way to write function notation. Okay. So when I say f of x, I'm just saying it's the function f. x is the variable. But if you notice in the actual meat of the problem, there is no variable. It's just a number. So when it's just a number like that, we go up one, two, three, and it's a. Well, it's supposed to be a straight line. I got a little curvy in there, but it, it will be a straight line. Do you know now why I always label my x-axis? If I didn't, what would happen? Would, would do you know which one the x-axis is then? No. Okay. So always label your x-axis and your y-axis just for that purpose. Okay. So make sure that it that it does that. This is what a constant would look like. It's always a horizontal line. Yeah, there isn't anything different because if it's a vertical line, it's not a function. The other thing that they're going to ask you for are things like domain. Have you guys ever heard of the word domain before? In your algebra 2s? Or algebra 1s, I mean? Maybe. Do you remember what it means? Nobody knows? OK. It's domain and range, right? Yeah, so if it's range, then domain is the mean? Uh, you're you're kind of getting there, Andre. What the domain is, in simplest terms, it's all the x values that work. Okay? It's the x values that you're plugging in. It's your input. Okay? So for the x values, x is from left to right. Okay? This thing's going on forever from left to right. Does it ever stop? No. So whenever it does that, when it never stops like that, we, we call that all real numbers. Okay. I wrote it out as all real numbers, but if you want to get fancy, here's the symbol for it. It looks like an R with two sticks in the end. Okay. That's what it looks like in, in uh, symbols, or if you want to write out the word all real numbers. Okay. A range, if domain is the x value, what do you think range is? The y's, right. What's the only y value in the problem that Miss Miller gave us? Three. It was the only number she, it was the number she said. So the range for this part would be just the number three. That's what it is for the constant. Okay, this is the first family. If you ever see a horizontal line 
the family is constant, and then it's and then you can fill out the rest of it from there. Like if I switch that up and not make it at a three and maybe make it at a five or a negative four, it's in the same family. It's still a constant. It's just now the dom the range changes. Okay. Everybody okay with constant? Then the second family is linear. And linear looks like f of x equals x. Now, just so that you guys are aware of this also, when you see f of x equals x, f of x can actually be, if you use your graphing calculators, the same as y equals. So what I'm saying is I'm, I want you to graph the line y equals x. Well, where does that go? So the picture looks something like this. It comes right up through here. Okay, That's the actual parent. That blue line is the parent. That particular thing, though, can be changed around and whatnot, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But that is the one that we look at. If it's got any sort of diagonal line to it, it is a linear uh, model. Okay. If it's horizontal, again, that would be a constant. Any type of diagonal, we are now in the linear phase. Okay. Now, as far as the other stuff that went along with it, domain. Does it keep on going on to the left forever? Does it keep going to the right forever? Yeah. How do you guys know that they keep going on forever? What did I do to make it signify that they go on forever? Arrows. arrows. Good. Okay. Those arrows on the ends mean that it keeps going on in that direction forever. So the domain is, again, all real numbers. So how you want to write that, if you want to write it out, that's your call, or if you make the fancy little symbol. I like the fancy symbol because I don't like to write. What's the range? Was there a restriction like the constant? The constant, remember, was only one number. This one's going, it's going all the way down and all the way up. So what's the answer for this part too? All real numbers. numbers, right, because there isn't a place where it stops. It goes all the way down and it goes all the way up. So again, all real numbers. So, everybody clear on what a linear looks like? All right. Next one that you're going to see is you're going to see, oops, not that one, absolute value. This looks like it's got, F, or in the absolute value symbols. You know, you guys remember what absolute value symbols look like? No? Two little lines okay, going around it. Anytime you see that, then what happens with this one is, or the way that this graph actually looks, is it's very similar to the linear, except for one thing. It doesn't actually go on down. It actually makes a V shape. That's what the, what the graph of an absolute value will look like. It looks like a V. Okay? So anytime you are making an absolute value, it will be V-shaped when you make it. Okay? Or if you look at it and see it, then you'll know that as soon as it's a V, then we are absolute value. What's the domain? All real numbers. Good. We didn't stop it anywhere. Okay, this time the range is a little bit different. It's not all real numbers because does it go down forever? No. Where does this one stop at? What's the lowest number it stops at? Zero. And then goes where? 
up. So there's a couple different ways of writing that. Your book writes it like this. Y is greater than or equal to zero. That's the way your book wrote it. That's the way Algebra 1 books write it, okay, for the most part. When you get to college algebra, they don't write it like this. What they do is they use a thing called uh, interval notation. And I'm going to introduce you to that so that way you have that background. So when you guys go off to college algebra eventually, whether it's next year or two years from now, you'll at least have seen it. Okay. Interval notation is a series of either parentheses or brackets in order to tell you where it's going. A bracket means equal to, a non or not equal to is a parenthesis. Okay? So for this particular thing, it starts at zero. So I make a bracket and then a zero. And the reason why I made a bracket is because I said equal to. And then it goes up forever. What's forever? What what's what do we what is it, Andrew? Infinity. Infinity and beyond, right? As my good friend Buzz says. Now, one thing with infinity, no matter if you're going all the way up or all the way down, with infinity, we always use parentheses, and the reason for that is because can you ever equal infinity? No. No. Because infinity is not a number. Okay, it's a concept that we know that it goes on forever, but it never ever can reach that. So Whichever way you would like to put that is up to you. Okay? I'm giving you free range, whether you want to put y is greater than or equal to 0, or if you want to put the new interval notation, that's your call. I will take either way. I just want to show you the interval notation now, so that when you get off to college, you're not, you've been exposed to it. Okay? But again, anytime you see the v, that's absolute value. Everybody okay with absolute value? And the last family that we're going to look at for this first section is the quadratic. And the parent is x squared. Okay. So now when you see a square on the x, now it's going to be something different. It's not going to be a v. It's not going to be a line. It's going to be something that actually looks like a u. That's what the quadratic or x squared looks like. If you guys had your graphing calculators yet, you would be able to put that into y equals and put it in as x squared, and it should draw that same shape or something like it. Okay? So that's what an x squared is going to look like. No matter if I add numbers to it or not, it's still going to look like a u. Okay? Not to be compared to a v. Right? A v is absolute value. Squared is a u. Okay. What do you think the domain is? All real numbers, right? Because it doesn't ever stop. What do you think the range is? No. Because remember, when we're doing the range, we're talking about from the floor to the ceiling. And where does it start? At 0, and then goes where? Up. So we can write that as y is greater than or equal to 0, or we can do the interval notation thing, whichever way you feel comfortable with writing it. Okay? Now, from here, what's going to happen is, is that we're going to give you some pictures, and we're going to just say, what kind of, what kind of family is this? Which, which family is it in? 1, 2, 3, or 4? Okay, that's what it's going to ask you to do. Then, what it'll ask you to do is I'm going to change them up a little bit, and I might draw them in a different spot, and it's going to ask you, hey, describe what happened. What do you see? Okay. Did you see it move to the left four? Did you see it move up three? Did you see it make it get wider or skinnier? Okay. What, do you th what do you see? That's what they're going to ask you to do for these first couple ones after you've identified the family. So if I draw one like this, Ugh. That one was better, huh? Ah, that first one's horrible. Okay. 
So give it a couple minutes or a couple seconds. Think about it before you act or react. And then with your groups, tell each other what it is. Which family is it? That's my question. Okay. Parker, what did your group think it was? Why? It's V-shaped. Okay. Now, in your groups, tell each other what you think is happening with it uh, compared to the original. Okay. To the original one, what do you think is going on? Okay. What do you think is happening? You were right that it is an absolute value. Did every other group know that? That's an absolute value because it looks V-shaped. That's awesome. So now, in your groups, tell me what ha or tell each other what's happening. Is it the exact same as the original one? If it's not, what changed? Thing. The graph shifted. Hmm? It shifted. Where? To the left and up. Okay. But don't go And I didn't put on there how far it went over because I didn't put tick marks, but event but on your pictures they will have that. Okay. So they'll be able to know. But I think you're right. Zane, what do you guys think? Oh, you just said it moved up and down. It moved up and left. Good. Okay, so I asked a couple of groups back here what they thought happened, and they thought it moved to the left and up. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, the other thing that I made sure that this group over here knew was I didn't specifically put on their tick marks, like how far did it go over or how far did it go up. In your book, they will have it on little sheets of grid paper. And then at that point, <coughs> what they'll do is then, when you're describing it, be more... Um, the word I'm looking for. Precise when it says. Huh? Yeah, I already got a call from. Okay. Um, but be more accurate, be more precise. If it gives you, you know, like let's say it went over one, two, three, we're going to say it shifted left three. And then if I do one, two, and it shifted, up to. Okay, so when they're asking you to describe it, be as accurate as you can be. Okay, so when it does that for you. Now, one of the other things that you may or may not have noticed is it also got skinnier. Did anybody say that in their group? Okay, Blake, you guys did? It did get a little bit skinnier. Okay, now that is going to be a little bit trickier, and we'll describe that in, in a little bit. But that's the point or the gist of your entire assignment is whether or not you guys can describe what's going on. Okay, so the first type of transformation and basically what if I write the word transformation just by your knowledge at this point what do you think the word transformation means? To change, right? It changes, okay? A transformation changes. Do we change every day? Now, you guys are juniors and seniors. You guys are still growing, okay? Or maybe or maybe not, but you're still growing, okay? I change. I get older, so therefore, because of you, I have more gray hair. But uh, not really, okay? But transformation means to change, right? So I'm going to give you some of the transformations. These transformations that we're going to go through, you guys, we're going to see like six or seven more times this year. You're going to see these over and over again. You're going to see them until... I'm blue in the face. Okay, the first one is a translation. I'm just going to write that to change because that's what you guys define it as. A transformation or a translation is the first type, and by the way, it's up there. Did you guys have it in geometry last year? Yes. Did you guys have translations in geometry? So re 
doing that old uh, the old stuff, what was it in geometry? What did they define it as? Huh? What was the translation of geometry on it? November? Anybody else remember what a translation was in geometry? A slide. A shift. Right? On the picture before this, you guys told me it went left and it went up. Guess what? You were telling me that it translated. Okay? So a translation is nothing more than a shift or a slide, whichever way you want to write it. We can shift up or we can shift down. We can shift left and we can shift right. When we go up or down, those are known as vertical translations because we're going up or down vertically. If we go left and right, those are known as horizontal translations because we're going to the left or to the right. Okay, so if you ever see something like a vertical translation, two units up, that's exactly what the last one did, just in more formal talk. Okay? You guys told me it went up, so you were on the right track. Formally, it was a vertical translation, two units up. Or a horizontal translation, three units to the, or to the left. Right? We went left on the last picture. Okay? So that's what a shift is. It's either going to be a trans, or, uh, to the right or to the left. The next one, reflection. What's a reflection? A flip. A flip. Right. Okay. Did any of you, by the way, use reflection this morning? Yeah. yeah, probably. All of you did because it's the second day of school and you wanted to look nice. So reflection. Almost every single one of you looked in the mirror today. And if you didn't look in the mirror at home, you will hopefully looked in your mirror on the way driving here. Okay, because that's safe driving using your rear view and side mirrors. But reflection is nothing more than a flip. Okay, and that's what we're going to do with that is it flips it over. So when you see something flipped upside down, we have reflection. Okay, now what that means is we have two different types of reflection that you're going to see. You're going to see a reflection over the x-axis. So like the V formation, right? Absolute value. If it flips over the x-axis, instead of going up, it's going to go down. Good. Or the U. Instead of going up, it's going to go down. If it flips over the y-axis, now those last two wasn't really a good indicator because if I have a V like this and if I flip over the y-axis, did I really change? No, but you're going to see a symbol in there like a negative sign that's oh, going to help us tell us that we actually reflect it. Now, could you tell with the line? So this is a positive slope line, but if I have a flip over there, it's going to go like this or a negative slope. So then you'll be able to tell. And the last type that you're going to have Is a stretch or a shrink? What do you think stretching and shrinking is? Changing the size. Kind of. Kind of like dilation, but changing the size. That's a, that's a generic way of saying it. We're just changing the size. On mine, that, that one group noticed that we actually got a little bit skinnier, right? What I did was I took the top and the bottom and I stretched it. Anytime you take the top and the bottom like that and you stretch it, that's going to be a vertical stretch okay and then I'm going to tell you how to do that here in a second but that's all that happens if it gets skinnier it's a vertical stretch okay if you grab the top and the bottom and you squeeze something together what happens it gets what wider right it should have got wider if I would have the ceiling come down on me like this and the floor come up on me eventually we'd, be, we'd get squashed right or get wider Okay, like Indiana Jones in that one movie, which you probably don't even know. Okay, um, The other way that we can also do it is horizontally. So if I grab the sides and pull this way, what's going to happen to the graph? If I were to take this arm and this arm, like the original ones, and had you guys pull on me this way, it should get wider. right? So what happens if I ask you to shrink it? 
what would happen to it? It would get skinnier. So does a vertical stretch and a horizontal shrink do the same thing? Yeah. Does a vertical shrink and a horizontal stretch do the same thing? Horizontal sh or vertical shrink or horizontal stretch, do they do the same thing to the graph? Yes. The difference is where the number is located at. Okay. And what it is for stretch and shrink, we're just changing the size. All right, so here's what's going to happen. They're going to give you an uh, equation like this. All they're going to say is g of x equals x minus 4. And they're going to say graph that and its parent. So how many graphs should you have on your, on, for this problem? Two. Two. And then describe the transformation that's happening. So. You need to recall a little bit. How do you graph things? Start with the x. Okay, start with the x. There's a few different ways of graphing this one. Can you plug in numbers? Have you done that before where you plugged in numbers for x, see what you got, and then made order pairs and then connected to the dots? Yeah, you can. That's called the potting points method or making a table. As some, as some people put it. First thing I want you to tell me is, what's the parent? Is it constant, linear, absolute value, or quadratic? What do you guys think? Linear. linear. I think I heard a couple of people mumble it, but they didn't want to say it out loud. But linear, how did you know it was linear? Because x is Yeah, it's just an x. It's not x squared. It does not have an absolute value. And it's not just a number, right? So process of elimination, it's got to be linear. So when I draw that, remember I have to make two graphs on there, you guys said. And according to my notes... That's the parent, okay? I'm just going to put P for parent next to it so that you guys know which one's which. Make sense? So how do I graph the new one? Could I make a table and then plot the ordered pairs and connect the dots? If you remember how to graph a line, can you do that too? Okay, that was something that you guys should have hammered heavily in Algebra 1. Do you remember how to use that? Remember, guys, this is the same as y equals x minus 4. That's in slope-intercept form. Okay? Do you remember how to do that? And if so, how? No, no, wouldn't have to do that for this one. Good, good guess, though. Parker? Okay, why? This right here, you guys, is in the y equals mx plus b. The b is the y-intercept, meaning that it's going to cross the y-axis at that number. Then, from there, the number in front of the x is the slope. You guys remember that? Where, when it's a 1 like that, it's up 1 over 1. So you're going to make like a set of stairs. Up 1 over 1. How many dots do you need? As many as you want, right? I made three. What should I do with the three dots? Yep, connect the dots. La, 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 la. Should they look the same? And should they both be linear or lines? Yes, they should. Okay, so in your groups, you've drawn both of them. One's the parent, and then notice I can use color. If you want to use color on yours, you're more than welcome to. But I put P for parent, and then I just drew the other one in blue. 
in your groups, I want you to tell each other, how did it change? Okay, Hannah, what did your group decide? It shifted down four. It shifted down four, right. Um, I also overheard another, uh, another group say it was a vertical translation, four units down. Okay, but the way Hannah described it, shift down four, that's exactly right. Okay, on an ACT test, they might say vertical translation, four units down, and be more technical with it. So... As long as you somehow denote it to me that you guys went down four, we're good. Okay? So you guys identified the parent, which was linear. You guys drew both of them. And then you also told me that it shifted down four. This is how the majority of your assignment is going to be. You're just going to have to do that, that particular, those steps. What do you think so far? Not too terrible. Okay. I'll give you another one. F of x equals negative x squared. So I'll give you a minute to work. I want you guys to figure it out. Try to answer the question. Use your partner if you have to, but try to answer the question. The question is, what's the parent? Graph both and tell me what happens. Good parent. Now, do you know what happens to the negative? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good job. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, as you guys are wrapping up, I'm going to start asking a couple quick questions. What's the parent? Quadratic. Is everybody on board with that one? Okay, how'd you know? Well, no, 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 it's x squared. I didn't have any picture on there, okay? But that's what it's going to be, though, when we draw the graph. The parent, remember, looks like a u, okay? Now, <clears throat> having a negative in front of it, how did you get the shape of what it, the new function was or the new graph was? Did you put in random numbers? When you do this, in case you didn't know this, many people mess this up. If I were to plug in a number, Lauren, give me a number. Four. Four. If I were to put a number in there and I put it into the x, a lot of people do this, and then they automatically do, they put the negative in, in with the four. Is that correct? No. I am not putting it in there because if I did that, Lauren's number would have been positive 16. That's not the right answer. I have college kids that do that wrong too, okay? And they do it wrong a lot. That negative should really be on the outside. What that's officially saying, you guys, is it's saying the opposite of x squared. So instead of going up, it's going to go down. I asked Lauren for a number. 
So if I just plugged in random numbers for this particular thing, 4 squared would be 16, but the opposite of 16 is negative 16. So when I insert numbers like that, in order to make a table if you needed to, a table then, 4 was my x, out came negative 16 for my function. Okay? So if I'm making a table of values, that's how it would look. Okay? So if you make a table of values to draw your picture, if you didn't know what it was, then what I would suggest that you guys do, do like three to five points. Okay, three to five numbers. So if I asked Blake, give me another number. You can't do four. Three. Another number would be different than the one that Lauren gave us. So if I put three in there, what's three squared, Blake? Nine. And the opposite of nine would be negative nine. And all I'm doing, you guys, is I'm making a list of ordered pairs. Then if I plug those on there and drew them, I would get something that did this. And it looks like the same thing. The only thing that it did was it flipped, it reflected over the, which axis? That's the x, because that's the bottom of which, oops, I didn't label my axis on there. Shame on me. Okay, it flipped. Instead of going up, it flipped down. Okay? What do you think so far? All right, another one. Hey, a little bit different. We'll do this one together. What's the parent? Absolute value. Andre, how'd you know? Because the x is in brackets. Yeah. So we know it's an absolute value, which looks like a V. Good job. So let's try this table of values technique. Zane, give me a number. Five. So I asked Zane for a number. He told me the number five. And if I put it into my problem, I'd have 2, the absolute value of 5. What's the absolute value of 5? Five? 5. And what's 2 times 5? 10. Nope. Because any absolute, the absolute value, remember, the distance from 0 is always positive. So therefore, or, or because it's a distance, it's always going to be a positive number that we're looking for. Faith, give me another number. Seven. Seven. So what's two times the absolute value of seven? Fourteen. Alexis, give me a negative number. Negative nine. I have a habit of trying to make parentheses there instead of absolute value signs. What's the absolute value of nine? Negative nine, I mean. Nine, nine and nine times two would be 18. OK? So here's what's happening. If I were to draw those things out, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At five, it'd be up here at 10. At seven, it'd be up here at 14. At negative 9, it would be way up here off my screen up here at 18. And if I drew the picture and you know that it's supposed to be a V-shape, what happened? It got what? It got skinnier, which we said was a stretch. Right. Notice where the number is, bless you. Notice where the number is. Is the number inside the grouping symbol or outside the grouping symbol? 
No, the number two. Oh, is the number two inside or outside the grouping symbol? Outside. Outside's going to always do vertical. Okay? So outside's always going to do vertical. When you tell me stretch for this one, I need to know if it's vertical or horizontal. That's the only catch for this one because if you say stretch, I don't know if you mean stretch or stretch, which are two different shapes. Okay? So when you guys told me vertical stretch, absolutely correct. So is an absolute value always going to be a vertical? No. It's the two that on the outside that makes it vertical. The absolute oh. value is just the parent. Okay. So it's a vertical stretch and then by the number two. Okay? Now, some of the problems are going to do this for you. It's going to say, use a graphing calculator. They're assuming that you already have one. And if you had one, this would be, be a lot faster. Okay? So as you start to get in your graphing calculator, I know some of you have one, and that's great. If you don't, make sure you get one soon, because we're going to use them a lot, and it's a lot, it'll save you a lot of time and energy. Okay? First of all, what's the parent? Absolute value. So you know it's going to be a what? It's going to be a V. So I know that this thing is going to be looking like this. That's the parent. In the directions, it's going to say, use it to graph it. When you graph these with your graphing calculator, I just want you to sketch what you see as best you can. Now, I'm going to be the graphing calculator for this one. And I'll help you out and I'll draw what it's supposed to look like. Because I know most of you guys don't have one yet. Okay, so it should look something like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, I kind of ran out of room. It's not supposed to be different sized. Okay, that's because I ran out of room for that. But that's what should have happened when what you should have saw. What happened? Okay, I reflected. How did you know I reflected? Because it's, it's like Yeah, it's flipped. Right. I reflected. Okay. Notice that I have a negative on here all by its own. And we said that it reflected. That's the reason why it reflected. And we went over the x-axis for that one because we went, instead of going up, we went down. What else happened? I shifted it or I translated it. Where? Left, how far? Left five. Anywhere else? Down three. Anybody know where I got left five and down three from in the problem? X plus 5 inside. Where did the 5 come into play? We said it went left 5, right? And then we also said down 3. Was there a 3 somewhere? Negative 3 down the outside. We're going to talk more about that as we go, but that's what I want you to do with these. So when you look at the directions on page 8, a lot of them is going to say, when we start on it, it's going to say graph the function and its parent, then describe the transformation. You guys have been doing that really, really well so far. Okay? Then it's going to say, graph the function and its parent, describe the transformation. Same thing that's happening. Then it's going to say, use a graphing calculator to graph the function and its parent, then describe the transformation. So this was that type of question. Then it will also say, identify the function family, which you guys did before for me when you told me it was linear or quadratic or whatever. Then describe the domain and range. Okay, we haven't done that part about it, but if I look at the new one, the blue one on there, the domain is still all real numbers because it goes to the left and right forever. But the range is now different. The range is when y is less than or equal to negative 3. Okay? 
So with that, that's how all the directions are going to be for you guys. I know that it went long. Like we only got a couple minutes. This is homework, right? Yeah. Yeah. So sorry I didn't give you more time in class to work, but it's only because it was the first day of it. Is everybody comfortable with what I mean by multiples of three? I've had people mess that up before. You start with nine, then you go to 12, and then you go to 15, 18. Okay, just double checking. 